Sorry, Bob, we're gonna have to say good night. Hi, guys. It is a, oh, just an average day on the planet. Uh, we got the Blue Jays screaming and the warplanes screaming, and Hamboat is back on his rock. The first day in a month, I am back on my rock full of piss and vinegar and snot and everything else. I think somehow we have made it to uh, Thursday, November 14th, 2013, and damn, does it feel good to be back on the rock, and I've got, good God, guys, so uh, where, you know, I could just go down, it doesn't matter whether I'm on the mainstream media or the alternative media anymore, I, I could sit here and rant all day, so uh, I'm gonna stay on the mainstream media because the alternative media does a good enough job. They don't need my help. So today I am going to somehow draw the, some sort of dots between my hero, Paul Watson, and the evil spawn of Satan named Donald Rumsfeld. There you go. Let's see how I pull this one off. I, I, I apologize to Paul Watson for disparaging his name. Paul Watson is the head of uh, the Sea Shepherd Society, one of my heroes. I apologize to Paul Watson for disparaging his name by even using it in the same sentence with that evil scumbag, Donald Rumsfeld. But they both showed up here today, right here this morning, in uh, <clears throat> the mainstream media here on Yahoo News. So let me start with this article on my hero, Paul Watson, this is out of the French Wire Service, AFP, this headline, Fugitive Eco-Activist Decries Terrorist Label. And this is uh, the latest article about how anybody who takes any any environmentalist with some balls, with some testosterone and some backbone willing to go up against these goddamn planet eaters, willing to take some direct action against them, not some chicken shit like me up here on my little rock ranting while uh, Paul Watson is out there actually doing something about these evil sons of bitches, in this case, whale hunters, uh, being described as terrorists, while evil sons of bitches like Donald Rumsfeld are having documentaries made about them. I'll get to that in a minute, but let me start off with my hero, Paul Watson. Okay. Fugitive eco-activist Paul Watson said Wednesday that green warriors, there you go, green warriors were being classed as terrorists, as them damn terrorists, and accused Japan of coercing other countries into making demands for his arrest. Okay. I love this. The Canadian-born founder of Sea Shepherd arrived in California on October 28th, more than a year after fleeing arrest in Germany, uh, based on uh, some trumped-up charge from Costa Rica that Japan brought on. And now he's looking for a fair trial in France. There you go. Try to, try to untangle that global mess. Okay, uh, I, I love this quote from Paul Watson. 
I don't understand why I find myself listed alongside assassins and terrorists just because I want to save some whales. Environmental activists are the new enemies. In Canada, they are viewed as potential terrorists. In the United States, the FBI has placed environmental activists along with Al-Qaeda and animal rights activists as the biggest domestic terrorist threats. Yeah, right. The, these tree huggers, we are, and, and I count myself in, I guess, although I'm just the, the cheerleader uh, of anybody uh, going up against these goddamn evil planet eaters, count me in as among the ham on little tail as the biggest domestic threat uh, against the United States of America, you're, lo you're, you're looking at the face uh, of uh, uh, apparently one of the biggest domestic threats against the United States of America, this former real estate agent who pulled his head out of his ass five years ago to figure out what the hell was going on on this planet. Let's see. Sea Shepherd, founded in 1977, has chased the Japanese fleet hunting whales off Antarctica for several years in a bid to stop the animals from being slaughtered. Al Japan says it conducts vital scientific research using a loophole in an international ban on whaling but makes no secret of the fact that the mammals ultimately end up as food both as food for Japanese consumers and cat food. Okay, anyway, I'm just going to jump down the end of this because I want to get to my buddy uh, Donald Rumsfeld. Okay, jumping to the end. Let's see. The Australian arm of Sea Shepherd is ready to set sail again on December 1st to disrupt the Japanese whalers. Quote, if we don't save the seas, we will not be able to save ourselves. If the oceans die, we will die. That is my sole message. And for uh, getting that message out, and I'm happy to do what I can in my tiny little way from this rock to, uh, to b spread that message around the globe. Uh, anyway, more power to you, my hero, that all eco-terrorist, Paul Watson. Now, we're going to go from there, guys, from my hero, Paul Watson, to one of the single most evil scumbags, war criminals, planet eaters, whatever you want to call him. Uh, the, the, the guy, I, I can hardly even manage to say his, this bastard's name. Coming directly from Yahoo News, this headline. Donald Rumsfeld tries to shape his legacy in new documentary. So here we have, here, here we have uh, th th this, while, while Paul Watson is fighting off everyone from Japan to Costa Rica on these horse shit terrorism charges. Here is, here is this, and it's hard not to use the F word. Here is this evil sack of shit walking around making some documentary about what a great guy he is. You know, it, it, it's really hard not to puke here. Uh, I'm going to put the link uh, for both of these articles on the Paul Watson one and the Donald Rumsfeld for anyone who thinks that they could wade through this without puking. 
but I'm going to go through this article and, and, and make some of my no-brainer comments because any rant on uh, Donald Rumsfeld is a no-brainer rant. And, and again, with apologies to Paul Watson for even lumping him in with his rant with, with this evil bag of shit, uh, I will continue. Okay. Not unlike other veterans of George W. Bush's administration, Donald Rumsfeld has insisted, and, and, and I have no doubt that this is true, that he does not dwell on how the public regards his time as Secretary of Defense and his handling of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Quote, I don't spend a lot of time in recriminations, looking back or second guessing, second guessing decisions made in real time with imperfect information by myself or others. The war crimes criminal wrote in his 2011 memoir, Known and Unknown. I'll have some, uh, I will have some comments about that in a minute, that known and unknown. Okay, so anyway, the former Secretary of Defense is the star of the Unknown Known, a documentary directed by Errol Morris that examines Rumfeld's strategy for invading Iraq against the backdrop of his long tenure in public life, including his time going back to the Nixon and Ford administrations. This evil son of a bitch goes all the way back to the 1970s. How old was this bastard in the, in the, uh, in the 1970s anyway? Okay, so the 90-minute film premieres today in New York City and opens nationwide in December. For much of the movie, Rumsfeld looks directly into the camera, answers questions from Morris, and reads what he calls... Anyway, I can't stand it. Moving along. Okay. Rumsfeld, who was fired by Bush in 2006, I, I guess I was, did forget that piece of information. I actually, am, I was unaware of that because in the year 2006, I was busy being a head up my ass real estate agent. And I could have given a shit about Donald Rumsfeld or uh, George Bush. So I guess I was unaware. Anyway. Rumsfeld, who was fired by Bush, uh, offers no apologies for his time at the Pentagon and does not come off as particularly tormented in the way that, uh, talking about, anyway, uh, I'm going to end the sentence there because too, too much information. You can go on the link and, and read all the rest of this. Okay. <clears throat> He doesn't come off as particularly tormented about things that happened on his watch. Particularly tormented. The, the guy is probably proud of the fact that he, as much as anyone, uh, is directly responsible for the deaths of uh, thousands upon thousands of American servicemen and probably millions of innocent Iraqi uh, men, women, and children that had, you know, that died completely needlessly in, in, in these evil bastards' little oil war. 
Uh, I don't know how much in this documentary is talking about the word oil war, resource war, never appears in this mainstream media article. I don't know whether it appears in, uh, whether it appears in this 90 minute interview with this evil sack of shit or not. Uh, nor does Rumfeld particularly defend his actions, his indefensible actions, except in pointing out that many of the post-9-11 policies enacted by the Bush administration have continued under President Barack Obama. And, and I have to say here, guys, I, I never thought I would hear myself saying this. I, I, I cannot find any, any problem with that statement. Uh, that is exactly, they, they have not only continued under Barack Obama, under that evil sack of shit war criminal, They, they have ramped up Barack Obama. For, for anyone unaware of this fact, uh, it has out-bushed George W. Bush and his daddy combined. Barack Obama, that, that Nobel Peace uh, Prize winning dictator up there, uh, jacking off, uh, you know, with, with his mouth sucking uh, Rex Tillerson's dick up there in Washington, D.C., uh, ha has done nothing but take the Donald Rem Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, George Bush model and put it on steroids. But this is not a rant about that little dictator, Barack Obama. This is a rant about that evil sack of shit, Donna Rumsfeld. Okay, I can't argue with this either. In, Rums, in Rumsfeld's, Rumsfeld's view, history will be the ultimate judge of his decisions. Well, it's 2013, so we've had seven years of history since this sack of shit was fired, and, and I think the judgment of history is, is pretty, is already uh, pretty obvious. The guy is an evil sack of shit warmonger who deserves uh, to spend the rest of his life rotting in prison. He needs to go there along with Dick Cheney, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. Go there uh, to, the, to the war crimes, to the International Court of War Crimes, uh, along with all of those African dictators. Let's send the real war criminals. Yeah, the day that uh, the day that Donald Rumsfeld ends up in the uh, International War Crimes Court is the day that Hambone Little Tail goes to work for Exxon. Jesus! I think history has already spoken. Okay, so this director Morris, uh, uh, Errol Morris who has been an outspoken critic of the Bush administration, does not demand an apology from Rumsfeld, but rather uses his documentary to cast a somewhat unflattering portrait. A somewhat unflattering portrait of a man once praised as one of the smartest minds in the Bush administration. A man who the film implies could use language and rhetorical riddles to justify virtually anything, it, 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 including uh, what? Uh, the use of depleted uranium uh, against defenseless Iraqi children. Uh, his, his charisma, Don, the, the charisma uh, of, of a toad. Somewhat unflattering portrait. Yeah, yeah, right? 
Oh god, guys, I, I'm the nausea. Uh, I'm just. Uh, let's see, where does it talk? I. Uh, it talks somewhere about this this known and and unknown. Uh, the the dot the. the Let's see, where does it talk? Anyway, I don't know. I've lost it. I've lost this shit. This whole thing about the known and unknowns. Okay, and, and about uh, Donald Rumsfeld being one of the most intelligent minds. I don't know where it is in the goddamn story, guys. I, 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 I am too flipped out to even read this horse shit in the mainstream media. But this, this thing about, uh, and I've put this clip on there before, about where uh, Donald Rumsfeld, and for the record, let me, let me make it clear, I've called Donald Rumsfeld a hell of a lot of things, but stupid ain't one of him, uh, ain't one of him. And so the, the, the little talk that got the most ridicule lambasted against uh, Donald Rumsfeld makes, makes perfect sense. What he was doing was talking about the known knowns and the known unknowns and the unknown knowns and the unknown unknowns anyway and the, anyway what he was doing for anybody who has read Carlos Castaneda he is talking about almost verbatim what Don Juan Matus was teaching uh, Carlos Castaneda about uh, when he was doing his teachings on the not wall, but I won't get off on a Carlos Castaneda rant. I need to do a Carlos Castaneda rant. But anyway, I think it was one of the most intelligent things that Donald Rumsfeld had. I mean, I have no problem with it. Uh, it's, it's one of the teachings of Don Juan Matus. So, I've done this rant before. I'm just going to do this real quick. Like a known known uh, versus a known unknown. Okay. Let me pull an example. Chemtrails. Chemtrails. A known known. Uh, anyone with a brain and two eyes can look up in the sky and it is a known known that chemtrails are real. The known, th this is what all of these chemtrail conspiracy factists, such as myself, know about chemtrails. The known known about chemtrails is that they are real. The, the known unknown uh, is we, what we know is that we don't know what is really behind them all? And this is where all of these wacko conspiracy, chemtrail conspiracies, we know that there are things we don't know about chemtrails. That is a known, known, a known unknown. Anyway, I'm not going to get off on another round about chemtrails. Let me, uh, let me get back to this article. Uh, guys, it's truly making me nauseous to read this article. Where was I talking about uh, how the film captures Rumfeld's charisma? <laughs> okay. Oh, here it is. Finally. All right. Rumsfeld explains in, in the in, in this documentary, I guess. Rumsfeld explains the difference between the known knowns which he defines as things that we know we know and known unknowns. Things we know we do not know. I got no problem with that. I'm going to give him a, uh, a break on that. Okay. In promoting the film, Morris has trashed Rumsfeld for his lack of contrition. In a press conference, the filmmaker described the ex-defense secretary as vain, smug, shallow, self-satisfied, and totally lacking in remorse, guilt, or shame. Quote, I have made a whole number of movies over the years 
about characters that seem to be completely unaware of themselves. I suppose in English, the word that we often use is clueless. Clueless. And uh, I think he is being too easy on Donald Rumsfeld. Donald Rumsfeld is not stupid and he is not clueless. He knew God damn well that his little oil wars over there were going to result in the deaths of thousands of Americans, the deaths and injuries and mental in, in, uh, injuries to thousands of Americans and millions of Iraqis and Afghanistanis and whoever else over there. He knew it goddamn well. He wasn't clueless about that. He, he might be clueless if, if he thinks history is going to vindicate this war criminal. Yeah, he, he's pretty goddamn clueless about that. In fact, the biggest unknown of the unknown known, that's the name of the film, uh, in fact, the biggest unknown of the unknown known is why Rumsfeld agreed to do the film at all. Rumsfeld, through a spokesman, declined several requests for comment but asked point blank in the final seconds of the film why he agreed to talk to Morris, where the former defense secretary grins and replies, I'll be damned if I know. There you go, guys. That was an easy rant. So here we have here we have Paul Watson, uh, who his biggest crime, I think, is throwing some rancid butter at, at a bunch of whalers, uh, spending thousands, if not mil millions of dollars to defend himself against these charges. The, the guy has never harmed one human in his life. He is looking at prison. Donald Rumsfeld... Uh, directly responsible for the deaths of millions of people is having a documentary made about him. And that is the way the world works. Bye, guys.